Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include European Commission seeks to step up fight against legal highs. Businessman admits he will earn £80,000 a year from just one wind turbine. EU's Van Rompuy warns Britain over European exit. EU softens new rules to tackle benchmark rigging. Plus, the European Union to send investigative teams to Gibraltar. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, Brussels could pull newly discovered legal highs from the market immediately under new drug enforcement measures proposed this week by the European Commission. European Union Justice Commissioner Vivian Redding announced the proposals are aimed at streamlining the laborious process of banning dangerous new psychoactive substances, which now can take up to two years to complete. One of its key proposals would enable the EU to temporarily remove new types of legal high-inducing drugs immediately while the level of health threat they pose can be assessed and graded over a 10-month process. While it's clear that most of the legal highs have already been tested, I'm convinced that the brainiacs in Brussels are off their heads on something. Perhaps these legal highs are just the ticket. On a more sinister note, however, the report does not say what constitutes a legal high. One could imagine that if Coca-Cola felt that it was losing too much market share to Red Bull, then a little light lobbying could see taurine banned overnight, and whoosh, suddenly your little can of lift has lost its wings. We'll keep you posted in our pipeline section as this story develops. A wealthy businessman has admitted he will make £80,000 a year from erecting a 150-foot wind turbine despite opposition from neighbours. Yacht broker Harry Stanley hopes to increase his income by putting up the 500,000 turbine, which locals have labelled a monstrosity. It would join two smaller turbines already standing on his 270-acre farm in Laxfield, Suffolk. The 70-year-old claims he is a strong believer in renewable energy and wants to help cut the country's use of fossil fuels. But his plans have angered residents, including former BBC royal correspondent Michael Cole, who have accused him of seeking to make money rather than save the planet. Well, here's the real agenda behind these monster windmills. It's all in the bottom line. It's outrageous when you think about what has happened to energy over the long term. Most of our utilities were sold out to foreign investment. Taxpayers' cash lining the pockets of landowners. And in return, what you and me and the rest of Joe Public get, you guessed it, higher taxes and higher energy prices. Britain would damage its standing in the world and miss out on lucrative trade deals if it turns its back on the European Union and votes to leave the 28-nation bloc, one of Europe's most senior figures said. In a speech in London, European Council President Herman von Rompuy said large countries such as Britain, the world's sixth largest economy, had the most to lose if they decided to go it alone in the world. The United Kingdom's commercial outreach, its military and diplomatic clout are matched only by a few other countries, he said in a speech on Europe's global role at Regents University. By working jointly, it has the most to win. For a country like the UK to make its voice heard in the world, Europe does not work as a damper, but as a megaphone. OK, Herman, well, it's all sounding pretty persuasive so far. But hold on, what about the fact that most of the Eurozone countries are in various stages of being flushed down the banks to latrine. Of course, as the sixth largest economy, surely that would stand us in prime space to be trading globally with all comers. You know, maybe we could even do a good deal for you, my little Belgian friend. But what if you're right? What if we can't do it alone? What if we need to stand shoulder to shoulder with others in a trading block? Well, nobody seems to want your political and fiscal integration, so here's an idea. Let's give Vladimir a tinkle, see if he's up for adding the UK into the Eurasian Union. Let's face it, the economic prospects look good, and given that the UK gets almost all its gas from Russia, 
it could work out to be a very good deal. European Union regulators have proposed new rules on commodity price and interest rate benchmarks and how they are set. But the plans are a pairing back of original ambitions for greater EU oversight over the multi-trillion euro markets. The draft law, presented by the EU's regulation chief Michael Barnier, is a central element of the bloc's response to the rigging of the London Interbank Offered Rate, or LIBOR, a benchmark used to price products for home loans to credit cards worth $300 trillion. Ah, poppycock! You must think us Brits are idiots! This is a classic problem-reaction-solution. The goal is to wrap in the financial markets under the wing of your banking union. You're hacking together a fiscal integration policy and trying to sell it to the public on the back of the LIBOR scandal. Come on, Barnier, at least be straight with us. Of course, sneaking in a little further down the report is this one-liner. It will also affect how the price of commodities, including North Sea Brent crude, a critical oil benchmark, are set. Ha <laughs> ha! Thought you'd get that one past the team at the unit? Think again, my little kleptocrat. The European Union will send a team to investigate the border dispute between Spain and Gibraltar next week, Britain's Foreign Office has said. Officials from the European Commission, the EU's executive arm, will visit the British Overseas Territory to look into what caused a summer of tension at the frontier that has strained relations between Madrid and London. Spain lays claim to the territory, which has a population of 30,000, which it ceded to Britain by treaty 300 years ago. The team will assess the border controls, free movement of people and goods, including fraud and smuggling. The Foreign Office said, citing an EU document given to its officials in Brussels. They will also check Spanish complaints that Gibraltar impeded its fishing boats by dropping concrete blocks into disputed waters off the territory. Gibraltar said it had created an artificial reef in the Mediterranean to protect fish stocks. Here we go again, folks. The supremacy of EU law at work. First off, the, um, what, well, um, uh, well, what's it got to do with EU? We signed that deal 250 years before the EU even existed. It's not disputed. There's nothing to dispute. That rock's ours. So you just watch out. Today in our video library... When the alternative press and internet bloggers talk about some global cabal that wants to instantiate a global world government, almost all of us, including me, go through an almost instantaneous dismissal of such ideas as crazy conspiracy talk. Well, here at the unit, we have been keeping an eye on this narrative because it continues to pop up as we do our research into the European Union and its crazy antics. When Jean Monnet set about the foundational strategy for the European Union, he knew the people would never accept a federal United States of Europe. And so it was to be done in disguise, under the auspices of an economic community. That's all documented and on record. Search Brave New Europe Parts 1-7 to on our website. When a senior Australian politician stands up in front of a huge audience and spends 20 minutes talking them through the players, strategy and political messages of the Agenda 21 programme and the intent behind the New World Order and global government, well then, friends, it's time to start listening. Now, one statement that struck me a pole-axing blow to the forehead was the following straight from the text of one of the policy papers. A profound reorientation of all human society. Unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. So you see, the European Union and its federational dream is not the end game, folks. It's the beginning. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>